The 18th of March will forever be etched in my mind. It was D-Day. It was the ask to form a collective community response to the challenges that were beginning to emerge in preparation for a national lockdown. Within two days, we were required to set up and form a dedicated helpline that our community could contact for a central location, but equally to look at the response and coordination of those needs. What could be put in place to support our vulnerable residents to maintain their support, their needs throughout the pandemic? It required some coordination. It required some coming together. The efforts that we made but when I say we, it's the royal we in, in as much as it wasn't necessarily one organisation, it was the collective organisations coming together to act as one. We formed a, a programme board, for want for a better word. It was a community forum, and the community forum group were there with people from the various agencies coming together to look at the specific needs that had to be set up, needed to be mobilised, and we needed to be certain in terms of how we were going to respond to any of those needs. I think the council's done a superb job, and I congratulate the council, all of it, and their leadership on doing such a cracking job and a supportive role, especially when it comes to highlighting and looking after vulnerable and at-risk people on the island. I think their role's been superb. The triage was the essence of the first contact. That was through our helpline. So the dedicated island number that was provided enabled people to go through one central line that we could triage the specific needs. Secondly, once we had established what the needs were, that there was a genuine need or it couldn't be fulfilled through alternatives, we'd then look at coordination. And the coordination was to start to recognise that there were various provisions being put in place that wanted to support our community through challenging times. But for that coordination, we needed to bring all the information in to a central point so we knew precisely what was there. So when one person contacted us through the helpline from Fentner, we knew precisely what was available within the Fentner area that we could attach that person to. The third stage and final stage was the referral, the response. Once we knew that there was a, a specific need for a person, whether it is for medication collection, whether it is for shopping support, or any other support aspects that might have been needed, we would look to make that referral to the relevant community agency. And where that couldn't be fulfilled, we had put in place backup provisions over seven days of the week through our own council responders. And a number of those responders were brought through from redeployed resource from within the council. It's interesting working with all the different people. We've got people from the NHS uh, that are working doing tests. We've got people doing uh, food bank work, giving out emergency food parcels to people. There's PPE being given out. There's all kinds of things going on. So it's, it's really interesting to see it from behind the scenes. Whether you're the person cleaning up at the end of the day, a driver distributing tests, someone receiving emails from London directly, everyone is playing their part. Everyone is really working hard to make sure that this is a success and we can move forward. So to give a, a sense of the provisions that we put in place, we, we looked at those key essential needs for our community. It was around the emergency food provisions. It was also around the medications. But more importantly, it was about that social interaction. To help those shielded residents, the dedicated helpline provision in place also had a subsidiary to that provision which was a daily, a weekly, a frequent check-in provision that was there to enable people that were concerned, anxious or worried to have a regular contact. That provision has been made available to our residents continuously. Where they need that support there is help at hand and that's the key message that we've tried to relay throughout the whole of the pandemic. So the helpline has responded incredibly well. It's been made up of our own Isle of Wight Council staff, but a number of redeployed staff as well. And it would be remiss of me not to mention the fact that we had staff from different areas of the council through leisure, through libraries, through heritage, our own learning and development team that responded to the needs and provided the support and dedication to the essential needs and contacts to our community. The island has really pulled together. It has pulled its stops out. There are people making scrubs, rushing around, helping other people. It's fantastic. It's come together. 
all of my colleagues across the council that are working really hard on keeping vital surfaces going, but also actually managing uh, the response to COVID-19 and doing a fabulous job. So many people are going beyond and above the call of duty. And I think more than anything, it's really good to see all the hard work that people are putting in and everyone's just grouping together and just adapting to, you know, every day it changes and everyone just rolls with it and gets on and just works together to get the best out of it, really. Volunteers, our community hubs, our staff, everyone associated with the response, including our voluntary sector colleagues as well, have been truly amazing. It is without question that without their support, their partnership working during this whole pandemic exercise, we would not be in the place that we were to contend with and to respond to the pandemic. Volunteers came together to help those people who were at, at most risk and most isolated across the island. 27 community hubs were formed, some of those through town and parish councils, others through community groups, some were quite big hubs. And then we had two people in their homes actually running a community hub. And the difference that that made to the lives of so many people during that very long first lockdown was amazing. A town councillor from Ride, um, very sensibly said it would be useful to bring together a meeting of representatives from each of the 27 hubs so that we could share information without, within one another, within between our hubs. And we were also fortunate in having support in those meetings from the Isle of Wight Council. That meeting, obviously in the first tranche of lockdown, um, was critical to how we worked together collaboratively with colleagues in the Isle of Wight Council, but also with organisations like Age UK, Isle of Wight, Community Action Isle of Wight, CAB, and that Community Hub meeting brought that information together. So individually, um, people were working in their areas, but collaboratively, we were getting that whole island view of what was going on. The community hubs that have been established across the island have just been amazing in terms of the work they've done to look after their people locally. They've identified them, they've worked with them. Some of the local shopkeepers have worked very closely with those community groups. So what, I, what I've seen is just an amazing community effort. There's a lot of thinking going on. Our staff are doing a range of tasks. We have people up at the hospital who are helping get people home and support them once they get home. They're obviously seeing an awful lot of things that are new to them and are particularly hard. The staff on the phones are dealing with some really tough stuff, but are there to support people. And our volunteers have been amazing. For me, seeing the incredible teamwork, particularly uh, within uh, the Isle of Wight Commissioning Group, uh, working alongside our colleagues in the Trust, and the local authority and seeing how we've all just worked together in order to try to um, respond to this pandemic has been absolutely incredible and heartwarming. I think it really brought about how we can collaborate more effectively when we work together. Just about everything that happens in your daily life, everybody has come forward and asked, what can I do to help? And for me, that sums up the spirit of the island. Um, we work well together and we will continue to do that. I think friendships have been made, collaborations have been made. Um, politics will always be politics and we're not gonna change that. But I do think the Isle of Wight and Isle of Wight Council and all of those other agencies that are so critical to the well-being of our population did a blooming sterling job and the volunteers were amazing. I have real confidence now that should should this pandemic go on for longer than we think or if something similar arises, I think we've got a model now that if this should happen again, we know how to react.